Tonight, Chromecast is one year old. Is Instagram going after Snapchat? And why Amazon's latest earnings look so dismal? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 136 for Thursday, July 24th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. It's been a year since Google released the Chromecast, the $35 TV streaming dongle, which the company says sold millions of, with users making more than 400 million casts. To celebrate the anniversary, Google's giving users a free 90-day subscription to All Access Music, its unlimited streaming music service that normally costs $9.99 per month. More than 6,000 developers are actively working on more than 10,000 Google Cast apps across Android, iOS, and Chrome. Chrome, and Chromecasts are now sold in 20 countries. In other Google news, VentureBeat is reporting that, as rumored by Variety back in May, the company has signed a deal to buy game live streaming firm Twitch for around $1 billion. They're citing anonymous sources familiar with the matter. Google's YouTube division is reportedly in charge of the acquisition. Twitch, which is based in San Francisco, allows users to broadcast their own gameplay sessions on a PC or an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 to online viewers. The company has over 50 million monthly active users and more than 1.1 million members who broadcast videos each month. And according to data from Sandvine back in March, Twitch represented 1.35% of all internet traffic. Amazon's second quarter earnings are in, and the company reported a $0.27 cent per share loss on revenue of $19.34 billion, which is a bigger loss than analysts expected. For the quarter, the company's revenue grew 23% when compared with the year-ago quarter and had an operating income of negative $17 million, which is down from its year-ago tally of $79 million. That would be in the plus side. The company also had a net loss of $126 million in the quarter, much more than its $7 million net loss in the year-ago period. The company notes that since its Fire Phone launch, quote, the rate of app submissions to the Amazon App Store has more than doubled. Also, according to the company, its web services group, Amazon Web Services, has hired thousands of employees in the last year, which could be contributing to these big losses. Amazon now employs 132,000 employees. Following the earnings news, the stock was down, losing around 5% of its value. Some changes afoot at Microsoft-owned enterprise social networking service Yammer, which has operated mostly independently since its acquisition by Microsoft in 2012 for $1.2 million, $1.2 billion. That's a big difference. Yammer co-founder David Sachs announced on Twitter today that he is leaving both Microsoft and Yammer. And ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley reports that Microsoft is moving Yammer into the Office 365 and Outlook development teams. Bloomberg is reporting that property site Zillow is seeking to acquire rival Trulia, citing anonymous sources. There are a lot of those today, which would combine the two most visited U.S. real estate websites. Bloomberg notes that Zillow could value Trulia at as much as $2 billion and may pay two-thirds of the purchase price with its own stock and that an agreement may be announced as soon as next week. Still a rumor for now, though. Coming up, why Wikipedia is blocking an IP address from the U.S. House of Representatives. And after the break, the next web's Martin Bryant joins us to talk about some new developments in Facebook apps. But first, let's talk about a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves some barriers when growing your wealth. You want to be wealthy, right? Well, there are lots of ways to be wealthy, but it can be hard to keep track of stocks that you you have some stocks in or your 401ks. How many of those do you have? I have like seven from old jobs, bank accounts. Maybe you've got your money all around, all on different sites. It can just be a hassle. Maybe you're paying somebody to manage your money for you. 
But are you paying them too much? You probably are. Personal capital brings all of your accounts and your assets onto a single screen that's on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet with real-time graphs. The company recently announced an award-winning app with Android Wear that's available for download in the Google Play Store. It's a watch app. It integrates with personal capital on other Android devices. So you've, you've got relevant and timely updates when you're on the go of your finances. It shows things like how much are you overpaying in fees? Are those 401ks docking you every month? How do you reduce those fees? How do you get rid of them entirely? You get advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay back big dividends. Personal capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. Set up your free account now by going to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal capital is free. It's totally free, and it's a smart way to grow your money. Thanks to Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Martin Bryant, Editor-in-Chief at The Next Web. Hey, Martin. Hello. And uh, thanks for staying up late. I know uh, it's uh, quite late across the pond where you are. Just after midnight, but uh, happy to join you. Well, happy to have you. So we talked briefly on the show yesterday uh, about Facebook's quarter two uh, earnings. Uh, they were pretty robust. Um, and some interesting, uh, interesting statistics in the mobile department. 399 million mobile only monthly active users which is about 30% of its active user base of 1.3 billion users. But most of that growth is happening outside the US, Canada, Europe, which is sort of where the legacy growth of Facebook started in the first place. If mobile is growing so quickly and outside of some of these countries, how do you see the Facebook experience changing? Uh, well, I, th I think obviously it's it's kind of very uh, much it very much justifies um, a lot of the work that Facebook has done over the last couple of years to uh, make itself a, a mobile first uh, company. But um, it, it's not necessarily uh, easy riding to uh, you know see these numbers for Facebook because uh, the average revenue per user for each of those uh, users um, that they're they're gaining in these uh, other parts of the world beyond the U.S., Canada, and Europe a lot smaller. They can't make quite as much money from each of those users uh, just. For comparison, U.S. and Canada, um, uh, Facebook makes uh, five dollars and seventy-nine cents uh, average uh, revenue per user. Um, if we go to the rest of world category, which is outside U.S., Canada, Europe, and Asia, uh, it's only eighty-three cents. So they may be gaining lots of users there, but they're not quite as valuable. Um, so uh, Facebook will certainly be uh, trying to find new ways of uh, monetizing within its apps to uh, to make more from uh, this growth it's seeing um, outside its uh, traditional stalking grounds. Well, new ways like more ads. Um, well, yes, uh, <laughs> certainly. Um, I, th I think we'll see uh, uh, certainly see more ads, um, uh, and uh, I think Facebook has been very cautious about the way it's been introducing ads. Um, it's obviously seen success with things like its uh, um, uh, install uh, ad, uh, ads for apps. It's uh, um, uh, and uh, we've seen things like uh, native uh, video advertising within um, Instagram and uh, all these kind of uh, ideas slowly being uh, tested and tried out. Um, uh, it's it's a balancing act, though. Um, mobile, obviously, a very personal medium, uh, and uh, Facebook uh, going to have to be very, very careful in how it, it, it monetizes mobile. But uh, there's certainly a lot of scope and uh, some very interesting uh, possibilities for the company, I think. Speaking of possibilities, a report from Recode today uh, noted that Facebook had at least been in preliminary talks with the Uber team about a possible integration of Uber, the car service, into the Facebook Messenger app. Now, Facebook uh, says that they have about 200 million active Messenger users. That would obviously be good for Uber, just as far as uh, it getting new users. But as a user, why would you hail a black car or a taxi from within the Facebook Messenger app? It's it's a slightly puzzling idea from a user perspective. Absolutely, um, uh, Uber is already uh, integrated with Google Maps, and that makes perfect sense. You're looking for a, a way to go somewhere. Uh, you have your public transit options, driving options, walking. Uber, fantastic. I mean, that makes sense. And uh, Google, um, uh, through Google Ventures, has a huge investment in Uber. Uh, kind of mutually makes sense. Uh, with with Facebook and Uber, Facebook Messenger, it does seem strange. Um, obviously. 
uh, Facebook, uh, now that Messenger is fully broken out from the main Facebook app, looking for ways to monetize it. Um, uh, and I can see how app integrations would make sense. Uh, and uh, it could be that um, Uber is just one of a number of integrations it's discussing uh, with uh, other potential partners. It's just uh, speculation, but it would certainly make sense. And uh, if you imagine um, uh, Facebook has its um, app links technology where you can uh, open uh, one app from another app, um, that could be used here um, to simply take you through to Uber. And then from there, you could uh, um, order a, order an Uber and Facebook gets a cut of, of the of, of Uber's revenue from that. That, that kind of makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I can't see many people ordering a cab from within Facebook Messenger because there aren't that many conversations you're going to have where you'll <laughs> have to um, end up getting a cab not many, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, maybe a few booty calls. I don't know, but not that many. Uh, not for me, anyway. Well, CEO Mark Zuckerberg said on the earnings call yesterday that the company was not going to pursue a cheap and easy approach to generating revenue from Messenger. So one would think maybe this is about uh, billing information, even if there aren't so many users that are hailing an Uber taxi or car from within the app. It's still something that the company, if it can integrate well, uh, could benefit from. Yes, I, I think that uh, certainly bill, billing information is uh, very useful. Certainly, when you when you see the the discussions around uh, a Facebook buy button uh, being uh, tested, I think that uh, certainly uh, as much billing information as possible uh, to make kind of friction free uh, transactions possible within in Facebook is certainly a good thing. And I think we're certainly going to be seeing a lot more uh, commerce uh, us, us being prompted at least to. Uh, uh, make more transactions through Facebook. Obviously, how that works, uh, especially with iOS and Apple wanting to take its cut, will be uh, will be an interesting uh, problem for Facebook to, to, to get around. But um, uh, yeah, um, certainly expect to, to be um, put into more buying, potential buying situations within Facebook over the next year, I think. Speaking of Facebook apps, Instagram users, uh, some of them have been reporting banner advertisements in the Instagram app for a new app called Bolt which actually exists, but this is something else entirely. Uh, this is described, at least in the screenshots uh, that have been sent into publications, as one-tap photo messaging app. And then next to the app's name and description, there's a download button that linked at least at one point to the Google Play Store, but it's a URL that doesn't work. Okay, so what's going on here? Is this some sort of Snapchat clone for Instagram? Facebook already made Slingshot, which is its own Snapchat clone, or just an app install ad platform that's being rolled out, or what do you think? Uh, well, yeah, I think there are there are two possibilities here. Um, uh, you were just showing the uh, the TechCrunch uh, report there, where uh, they were speculating it could just be an app install ad test. So it could just be a dummy app they made up, and uh, they just stuck the ad unit there to A B test how many people tapped the the free button to try and download it. Uh, that would be quite a frustrating thing for the people who tried to tap it, obviously. But um, uh, you know, that's that's one possibility. But uh, it's uh, if I was a betting person, I'd say that it, it seems very likely that Facebook would have some kind of app like this in the works. Obviously, it's only a few weeks, you know, uh, less than two months really since um, uh, since uh, Slingshot came out. And uh, yeah, so I don't know whether they'd um, launch another messaging app so quickly, but certainly uh, Facebook is, uh, has been very open about the fact that it's uh, very... Um, uh, it's trying lots of different things with mobile. It's trying these apps that some of them may work, some of them may not, but let's just get them out there, see how people uh, react to them, uh, and uh, hopefully something will stick. Um, I'd say that Slingshot, obviously I, I've got no access to Facebook's figures on that, but uh, my guess would be it hasn't stuck. It certainly hasn't stuck with anyone I know because of its incredibly bizarre um, <laughs> so way weird. of you... I know. Uh, you, you, I have. I, I just have a load of unread messages on there because I know, well, if I read this and before I can see it, I've got to send them a message and it just goes on forever. So I just... Uh, it's yeah, the it's endless loop not, that doesn't work. Nobody wants to get yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. You, it, it's like it's designed to create a loop of engagement, um, but it, it's it's over designed, I think. Right. Um, it, now, Bolt, on the other hand, uh, from the four word description uh, we've seen, um, uh, assuming this is um, a real app, is uh, one tap photo messaging, which sounds very much like Tap Talk, uh, which uh, is uh, a really nice app very quickly sending photo messages to friends you know in, in, in a couple of taps you can uh, send a photo and uh, um, I, I was uh, having a, a photo discussion 
discussion, sending photos between uh, <laughs> uh, me and our uh, community director yesterday. He was on a train and I was in a co coffee shop and uh, very boring, blurred photos, but it, it was fun. And, um, and, you know, Facebook is certainly shameless about um, uh, copying other people, um, as we've seen uh, in the past with some of its uh, spin-off apps. So uh, uh, so if, if it is that, um, it's certainly very believable and uh, and could well work. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, as for where, where, when we'll see it, that's a, an interesting point. Um, uh, now, uh, Slingshot was uh, leaked um, about a week before it was launched, so maybe um, we'll see Bolt next week, but who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll never see it. <laughs> exactly. Martin Bryan is the editor-in-chief over at The Next Web. Thanks so much for joining us, Martin, and tell folks where they can keep up with your work. Uh, you can head to thenextweb.com and uh, catch up with all our, our work there. And uh, personally, I'm Martin SFP on Twitter. Thanks so much for joining us, Martin, and have a great night. Thank you. Finally, I mentioned Wikipedia bans in the Congress. So here's the deal. A Wikipedia administrator has blocked anonymous edits from a congressional IP address for 10 days because of what is considered disruptive edits being made by someone or someones located in the U.S. House of Representatives. The changes were monitored by a Twitter account called at Congress Edits, which automatically tweets changes to Wikipedia pages made from within the Capitol. And bizarrely, some of them included moon landing conspiracy theories among many other things. Wikipedia has around 1,400 administrators who have been approved by the Wikipedia community to monitor the site for abuse and vandalism and trolling. Obviously, this fell under that. It's a 10-day block, but it only affects one IP address, which could potentially be used by a number of different users within the Capitol. So good luck finding the culprit or culprits. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. Write us at tn2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, and feedback. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lee. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.